Hello and welcome to E major scale. E major has four sharps, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp and D sharp. And fortunately, like every single other major scale, it's the same on the way up as it is on the way down. So it's going to be a fairly predictable scale. Also, we're lucky today because there is a full two octave scale here. So it makes complete sense. We go from E, second finger on the C string, all the way to the fourth finger on the A string, which is also an E, two octaves up, and then we come all the way back down. Yeah, so let's find our first note. First, well, the lowest potential note in uh, E major is a C sharp, so low first finger. Now D sharp is a tone away. But as you can see, I'm using a second finger for D sharp, but on the sheet music, it looks like it should be a first finger. So let's do that instead. So we have C sharp. Now we move our entire hand a tone closer to D sharp, first finger. And now E is going to be a second finger, just the way it seems it should be. Yeah. Let's start from here. We need two tones and a semitone, three tones and a semitone for every major scale. So let's do the calculations. E plus the tone is F sharp plus the tone is G sharp. And our first semitone is between four and one, which means we have a full spread between all our fingers. And our first finger obviously is already on the next string and that brings us to A. Now we need three tones, so from A to B. C sharp, D sharp, and again we have a semitone between 4 and 1, so 1 just simply moves to the next string and we have our E. So the first octave started on the second finger, so the semitones were between 4 and 1, as always. Now we continue, the second octave starts on the first finger, so the semitones will be between the third and the fourth finger, so let's go, E. F sharp, G sharp, A, or the open A of course, B, C sharp, D sharp, and E. So all in all this is a very straightforward scale, right? We start on the second finger on the E, just like it looks, and we have semitones between four and one for the first octave, and semitones between three and four for the second octave. And it's on the same on the way back. But there is an alternative, and I'd like you to learn them both. Remember when we started, we did a low first finger for the C sharp, and a high first finger for the D sharp. So we had our first note of the scale, the E, on the second finger, yeah? Now what if we don't do that? We stay with the low first finger. Now we have C sharp. Second finger is going to be D sharp. And our third finger is going to be the first note of the scale, the E. Now our scale starts on a third finger, which means the semitones are going to be between one and two. So let's find out. So, E, F sharp. Next note is G sharp, which is a low first finger on the G, right? Our first semitone is G sharp A. Same thing is going to happen on the next two strings. So, A, B, C sharp. And here again you have one and two against each other between D sharp and E. So this was our first octave. Yeah? Now instead of having those big spreads between four and one, because the semitones were there, now we have one and two against each other and there's no massive spread. So physically this feels easier to play. However, what looks like a first finger on the sheet music, it's now a second finger, which looks like 
second finger is a third and so on yeah so it is a little bit more confusing in that way but physically for your hand the distances are not as big yeah so maybe it's an advantage maybe it's a disadvantage it's up to you to decide yeah we'll continue we're still in half position so we're on the e remember now we're going to do, go for a tone two f sharp g sharp And now we need an A, so the only option we have, we can't use the fourth finger because it's busy already, so leaves us with an open A. And on the A string, everything goes back to normal, first finger on B, C sharp, D sharp, and E. Yeah? So, what we did right now, we stayed in half position for the first three strings, yeah? And then when we, after we played the open A string, we went back to a normal first position. That is your second option. Now, a combination of the two would be the third option. And to me, that is the easiest one. I prefer to use half position for the first octave, so... So E is on third finger, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp. But then I like to go back to first position with a 1-1 one, one semitone shift to E. And then use the normal finger pattern for the rest of the scale. But that is my personal preference. Yeah. What you do, how you combine the two options, is completely up to you. But I do suggest you learn one of the options, choose one of the options, learn it very well, and only once you know it very well, start experimenting with other options. Yeah, if you switch too often between the different options, it's going to be much harder for your fingers to remember what to do and to know when your string chases are going to be and stuff like that. So I suggest pick one, perfect it, and then start experimenting with alternative finger patterns. Uh, next thing to discuss would be the sound. See, the first note in the scale is a two-beat note. Easy enough. One, two. And that is four, followed by four quavers at the tip. One, two, three, and now we have two beats all the way back to the heel on the F sharp. Two, is that the sound at the heel tends to be much louder than at the tip if you don't anticipate it and it has to do with the fact that at the heel you have all the weight of the bow that's hanging across the string but when at the tip you have nothing helping out so the bow becomes lighter and lighter and lighter yeah and you have to anticipate that a bit. So you have to think that you play quiet at the heel and gradually go louder and louder until you get to the tip. Not too much louder, just a bit louder to, to compensate for the fact that there's no weight helping you out when you're at the tip. Now when you go back you have to go quieter and quieter and quieter until you're at the heel. Yeah, Just to make sure that the dynamics and the sound evens out. You do not want this scale to be like... Do you hear how much it changes from quite aggressive at the heel to kind of fluffy and undefined sound? 
at the tip, yeah. So you have to anticipate that. Now, um, in future chapters, there will be exercises on dynamics. And that's essentially what this is. You have to anticipate, you have to think mezzo piano. So a little bit quiet towards the heel, a mezzo forte, a little bit loud at the tip and go gradually louder and louder on the way to the tip and gradually quieter and quieter towards the heel. So experiment with it. If you can't figure it out naturally, have a look at the videos and do some exercises on sound control and dynamic control across the bow. Yeah? Anyway, let's have a full run through of the scale at 40. So let's find, this time we're going to play the entire scale in normal first position. So we start on the second finger, so uh, C sharp, D sharp, and we go semitone closer to us to E with the second finger. That's your first note, ready? One. Two, three, four. This was all of it in first position. Have a look at it, practice it, and maybe do it with the half position option as well and see whichever you find easiest. Then make a choice and stick to it for a while. Yeah. Um, I hope you noticed that there's only one open string we can use, it's open A string. Of course, because of the G sharp and the D sharp, we can't use open strings there. We have to go for either low first fingers or high fourth fingers on the previous string. Yeah, so the only open string we can actually exploit is that A. Okay, good luck with this. I'm going to move forward to 60 beats a minute and uh, 
I'll see you there or with your compliment, of course. Bye bye. Take care.